Today we're speaking with Kurt Naus, who is the Director of Volunteers in Mission and Outreach. Thank you for coming again, Kurt. We always appreciate having you here. It's great to be here. So uh, you're going to be telling us about a trip you recently took to India that was um, in preparation for a mission team that you're going to be taking in the fall. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you saw there and why you took this trip? What I saw there is just, uh, it's, it's too numerous to, to speak of it, all of it, but the reason we go or the reason I went was I've never been to India and as a conference we've had some pastors who've served there uh, in various roles but we haven't traditionally sent mission teams there and what I try to do on the conference led teams is look to areas that we aren't currently serving mm -hmm. um, and part of what I do is one team out of country each year and so I went there to first educate myself just some basics of Indian culture um, and see what things we could work with the Northern India Conference on that we would be beneficial, um, not disruptive, but also um, see where their needs were as opposed to where we wanted to serve. Sometimes those aren't the same. Sometimes we have this idea we're going to go into a country and we're going to do this and do this, but the country may not really need what we think they need. Right. And so I learn about that. I, I meet some people and I start to lay the groundwork for logistics to take a group back. So what are some of those cultural differences that you noted while you were there that you'll tell your team? About? Well, some of the things we'll see are different roles um, between men and women. Um, again, culturally, not, not judgmentally, just different. And things where perhaps we would greet someone on the street um, of the opposite sex. Um, we want to be a little more sensitive to that in, in India. Uh, it was one of the things that I was told. <laughs> um, men and women certainly interact professionally in, in, in ways that are pretty normal to us in the U.S. But when you're out in public, there, there are different standards of, of interaction. Um, so things like that. And even things as simple uh, as airport security or security issues, um, men and women will be separated. Again, not a problem, not a judgment, but to help people know what to expect when they go mm -hmm. and not be flustered if all of a sudden you get pulled out of a line and taken over here, well, you haven't done anything wrong. It's just they separate for for security reasons and searching just to be sensitive. So, mm -hmm. um, What are some ways that you feel like you can build the global church? I think the biggest thing we try to do is, is love people where they are in the situations they are in. And we feel very strongly that that's the example Christ gave us. Um, and sometimes it's, it's just that love, that knowing that you have a brother and sister in Christ halfway around the world mm -hmm. or whether, or around the block. I mean, here we're talking about India, but that in spite of, say, all these cultural differences, mm -hmm. we can be united in our belief in Christ as, as our Redeemer. And sometimes that's a major encouragement to missionaries and to other church members. Uh, again, in a, in a situation where the Christian church is the minority in, an, in a community like they are in most communities in India, um, we hope that that brother and sisterhood will encourage them and, and let them know they're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, even if they don't have a whole lot of neighbors who, who share their faith. A lot of times on mission trips, we really are being the hands and feet of Jesus, um, literally working with our bodies as well as forming relationships. Um, but you did identify um, one way that you're going to be able to help uh, construction-wise over there. Can you tell the viewers a little bit more about that? 
one of the things that when I was there, I toured village churches with the district with a district superintendent, and we came across a church that literally is falling in. The roof has probably a three foot in diameter hole in it, mm -hmm. and because of that, it, right now they they can't worship there, and because they don't have a place to worship, they can't get a pastor to serve. Um, so we we hope to go back there and at a minimum get a roof on the church. We may actually expand the sanctuary. Um, and the district superintendent has told us that if he can get us a, a serviceable church, um, he'll be able to get a pastor to come in there. And, and the neat thing, although it was also sad when I was there, is while we visited the church, several women came out and were begging the district superintendent to send a pastor. Mm -hmm. They wanted someone to, to share the word, to teach them, to preach to them. And they were so hungry. And uh, it, to me, it would be such a, a wonderful thing to come alongside them and help them get a situation where a pastor could come there and they could worship safely and um, go, you know, expand their witness within their community. Absolutely. Um, if any of our viewers would like to learn more about this trip or other ones that you're leading, um, how would they find out more information? The easiest thing is to. Uh, Email me at cnaus at susumc.org. Um, they can visit our Facebook page, the VIM tab on the missional board, which uh, will have all of our teams going out, not just mine, not just India, not just out of the country, uh, right here. Those are the easiest ways. Talk to your pastor, mm -hmm. um, call the conference office, anyway, uh, Get, they'll get the word to me and I'll, I'll be happy to get back to them. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. If you would like to learn more, you can check out my Facebook page at Susquehanna Express. Express.